Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Mesa Ridge 262 RL travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you need plenty of room for this big awning to come out. Then over on your off campsite, Besides your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Behind your slide, all the way back in the rear corner, is going to be where your power is, and right next to that is your docking station for your water. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to lower, extend to raise. I recommend going ahead and getting the stick on level. Find the center of your unit on your off camp side. Stick that on there and have someone watch it while you're doing this. Now, if for some reason you uh, lose power and can't get that up and down, up underneath that rubber stopper, your hand crank will fit on there and get this up and down without power. Speaking of power, check your battery post now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose. Once we've got our unit level and stable, next thing we're going to do is or level. Next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Your unit is equipped with power stabilizing jacks. Lippert say extend or retract. We're just going to hit extend. As I do, I'm going to mention a couple of things. Don't be alarmed if you see one side go down before the other. Also, as you see, as that foot's coming down. Sometimes it needs to be flattened out, but that one went by itself. Now I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Good investment. Use your 10% off coupon. You get a four pack from our store. Put them down underneath these and run these down just until they're taut. Once it feels like you're going to lift the unit, stop. Again, because remember, our unit's already level. All we're trying to do is stabilize it at this point. Do the same thing in the rear. Get them running down. Then once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. 30 amp cord, 30 foot 30 amp cord. Plugs in here in the rear. The way they go on now, they plug in at about 11 o'clock and then turn it to noon and then put on your black washer. Now, if for some reason you need to plug into a 110 at the end of that in your convenience pack, you can use this 30 to 15 amp reducer. Got your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. Your docking station is in this little booth here. It says docking station on it. Lift this up. Take that switch and put it down there and that'll hold that open for you. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use this when hooking up. Following instructions up here, down here is where we're going to hook up our city water. Hook up your hose, hook up your water pressure regulator, but don't turn that on yet. One more step. Let's find your hot water heater. Yours is going to be located over here on the campsite, right in the middle. 
And all we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plug's back in there. Hands around this here. Well, that was easier with two hands. So all we're gonna do at this point, throw some plumber's tape around here, not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Get some plumber's tape on there. Get that in there nice and snug. That's an inch and an eighth socket. Once that's in there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After the hose is on for a little while, go inside, open up your slide. I need you to open up all of your water taps. Get inside, get a nice steady flow of water going through those, get all the air out of the line. Then you can shut them off. Come out here and check to see if there's water coming out of here. And you'll know this is full and you can turn it on from indoors. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use a city water connection. We're gonna go dry camping or boondocking. Well in that case, we can start by turning this to tank fill. Got that down for city, up for tank. Get that up to tank fill, fill it in the same spot, treat your hot water heater the same way. Go inside, treat everything the same way. It's just when you're filling up your freshwater tank now, you want to go inside and watch um, the level of your freshwater tank where you check your black and gray tanks. There's also a freshwater tank. Once you see that full, go ahead and remove that hose. Switch this back down to city. And then whenever you want to use that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and hook to straight city when you've got a hose in here. Only when you're uh, bleeding from your tank. All right, we are all set up with power and water. Let's go ahead and walk around the rest of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. You got a hot and cold shower out here. Down here's your tank flush. We'll talk about that when dumping our black and gray tanks. And your power stabilizing jacks. You got a ladder. Utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year and check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Also prep for a backup camera. You have a spare tire. I recommend getting a cover from that. That'll help keep it from uh, dry rotting over time. Coming down our campsite. A couple things mentioned here. In here you got a couple marine grade speakers. There's a vent for your microwave. The spray port hose also, that you use on your hot and cold shower will also plug in out here. A couple of 110s. Again, your hot water heater. That's the fluid for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running it, steer clear of it. It does get hot. Separate entryway for your bedroom. As you saw that light come on, you can set these to motion or just on. Right above that light. Is where it's pre-wired for solar. Keep that template on there. It's for techs in the future to uh, see if you want to have this wire for solar. This is your spray port hose. This is a manual override for your slides, or excuse me, for your stabilizing jacks. You see on the opposite side of where you electronically put them down, you can put this hand crank on there, which is slotted, and then you can bring these up should you lose power. They've also provided you with the three quarter inch socket. Battery post, check them now and then, make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. Your propane does come with a cover, down a regulator, lefty loosey to open, just point it toward the tank you wish to be using. You can put it in the middle and it'll automatically cross over. I recommend doing one tank at a time because that way even if you have to get up in the middle of the night and switch them over, you know where you're at. You know you're down to one tank. Continuing down our off camp side, our big pass through storage. Stabilizing jacks here. Here's where we would dump our black and gray tanks. And that about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look at the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of emergency. Coming up to my right is my control panel. So up here is where you see your brand new battery. Fresh water, that's the one I said to watch when you're filling your pot of water. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using that fresh water. On your water heater, 
This side for gas, this side for electric. It does make a difference, choose correctly. Lighting interior and exterior, slide in awning. On your awning, you only wanna run that out until that brown bar, you can see that brown bar and that white flap is down to 90 degrees. If you hold that button down, that will continue to run itself out and start to run itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you're running it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Okay, run that in for you here real quick. Shut off those on lights. And I forgot that in. Show you on your door. They call these slam locks because they work best when gently slammed. Coming into the living room here, smoke alarm above your TV. Uh, when you arrive at the campsite, go into your menu on your remote here and run a digital channel scan. That'll allow you to pick up all the local channels from wherever you're at. Sound system down here. Let's go through modes. There's our radio. Indoors or outdoors. We'll shut them both off. Auxiliary. Oops. TV. You can run your TV sound through here. DVD, Bluetooth, and back to radio. Coming into our kitchen, a self explanatory microwave. Show you that working for one second. Cancel. You got a light and a fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Roll that back, turn on your panel light. Turn this to the flame, hit your spark, and your gas is on, that's where that'll light up. All three of these the same. Also your oven, no need for a pilot light anymore. Turn that to light, spark it here, then turn it to the desired temperature. Rock the panel light down for an oven light. Below that, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. A couple of 15s in there. I highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. A lot of this is individual lighting. Go one touch. On your sink, a little plumbing to maintain. There's your access panel. Let's keep an eye on things. Uh, has your access panel also to bypass your water heater, which is right there. Norco fridge, let's turn that on. Right now it's set to gas. Change the mode to auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. If I were to unplug, it would switch automatically to gas. Or you can go strictly electric or strictly gas. One through five, five being the coldest over here. Generally, you want to keep that on auto. The table here will lift up. His leg remove. Set the table on these black pieces here. Put a couple of cushions on top. One of the sleeping quarters. See how to turn your sofa into a bed. Remove your Velcro cushions. I like to stand in the middle, it gives you good leverage. Set this up and fold your legs out. Pull the whole thing towards you. Nice to lay your back down. Give you another sleeping quarters. Most important thing on putting this away, lift your back up first. Otherwise you will damage your sofa. Again, lift this up. Fold your legs in. Jack knife this back down. Just that quickly. Get back to a sofa. Head down the hallway to our thermostat. Get the air kicking on in here. Hold it in to turn it on. Let's go through our modes. Find cool. There's your AC kicking on. These have a quick dump too. When you arrive at the campsite, it's super hot in here. Open up that quick dump. 
that'll help it circulate excuse me and uh, cool the cool air you can shut that off hold the button in to shut it off shuts off rather quickly now when I hold it back on I'm going to turn on the heat get around the heat here a little heat you hear that kick on now I shut that off I generally only takes a couple of minutes and that'll shut off too down below that is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector the reason I mentioned it's 12 volts always running off your battery so if you are out boondocking somewhere nothing plugged in charging your battery use your battery disconnect if you're going to be gone all day to keep this from running your battery down into our bathroom you got a 110 with gfci reset a little more plumbing to keep an eye on and a shower door that you want to make sure you have snapped open for travel so our glass doesn't bounce around have a hand crank open uh switched switch vent here but you do have to hand crank that open lastly come back into our bedroom Again, your separate entry doorway. Another hand crank vent, no exhaust to it. Prep for a TV here. Backer, cable 110. Do have some storage up underneath here. Some drawers on the sides. Charging station at both headboards. Now let's act like we're going to leave the campsite and close the unit up. I like to walk around, starting in the back, and shut my lights off. Go all the way up to my control panel. I know my bedroom and bathroom lights are off. And then go to my control panel. Shut off my interior lights. And then I can look and see any individual lighting I need to walk around the unit and shut off. And once I have all the accent lighting, I'll turn back on my interior lights and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. Just just slide in. At the end of this, as it comes in, you will hear a little noise. And that is just the slide mechanism telling you I'm in all the way, you can stop. There's the noise. Shut up my interior lights and exit the unit. Biggest thing on these steps, you want to remember opening or closing is to have this exterior door all the way open. Otherwise, that will catch on it. Your feet are also adjustable by simply pulling out on this and moving your legs where you need them. So set this inside. Lock it inside. Before you leave the dump station, and I say that in case you want to go in here and look at your levels while you're dumping, lock and deadbolt this door. Lift and turn this handle. If we are out boondocking, we're gonna come around, we're gonna lift up, retract all of our stabilizing jacks. And just behind the tires here, that white hose, we're gonna go ahead and dump our fresh water. If we are at a campsite, we're gonna unhook our cable, our water, our power, bring up our stabilizing jacks, and head on up to the dump station. Let the dump station park accordingly. Your dump is just in front of the tires. On your off camp side, arrive, hook your hose up, and pull that black handle back there. Now once that black handle and that black tank sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, make sure it's empty. If it is, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and come here to tank flush. Plug that hose in there and let that run for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, 
remove that hose make sure all the washout you just put in there has drained then close that black handle and pull your gray handle now while my gray handles are draining i like to get up underneath there and dump my fresh or my low point drains your blue and red hose over there open them up dump them waters if you're done camping for the season when your fresh waters are done or those uh low point drains are done come over to your hot water heater again lift up on this fresh release valve first to make sure all the pressure gets out of there and water be careful when that's done push that back down otherwise your door won't go back on then you can pull this drain plug again be careful if it's hot water coming out of there when that gray tank is done check inside make sure it's empty if it is close that black handle grab your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it in your bumper and head on home again we thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this mesa ridge for many years to come happy camping